So work example nine. Ashley receives better results for mathematics tests than she does for her English tests. Well, that's just because maths is a better subject. If the sum of the two marks is 164 and the difference is 22, calculate the mark received for each subject. Now, the only real trick here is setting up your equations. So first things first, she receives better marks. Sorry, he receives better marks for the maths test. Oop. Then for English, the sum of the two marks is 164. So that would imply to me that maths plus English is equal to 164 and maths is the bigger number. Okay, so the difference is 22. So maths minus English equals 22. Now, it wouldn't really matter if you mix these up the other ways around. It would just mean that you'd end up with two answers and you would sign the bigger number as maths still. So calculate the mark he received for each subject. Okay, so just like we've been doing in class, this isn't hard. You just need to think about what you're doing. We're going to get this top equation in the form of M equals. So if I do that, equation 1 is equal to M plus E equals 164. I'm going to move the E across by subtracting it because it's currently positive. So it's going to become M is equal to 164 minus E. Now I'm going to substitute this M into this position for the second one. So M minus E equals 22, which is from equation 2. I'm going to substitute in M as 164 minus E minus E equals 22. Now I didn't make my equal signs line up. hate that for me. We're going to be more careful with that in the next part. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the brackets and expand the like terms. I mean, sorry, and group the like terms. So we'll end up as 164 minus 2e equals 22. Now I can take this to the other side by subtracting. If you are making mistakes with your algebra, it's because you're skipping this, where you show the working for it. Showing working feels like you're doing things faster, but very rarely does it work out. Now I'm just going to punch that in my calculator. So that's going to be minus 142. Take this one across by dividing. If you don't show your stuff as fractions, you're going to make your life a lot harder. The two negatives will cancel out to become a positive, and then all I have to do is halve that top number. So it's going to become 71. So the mark for English is 71. Next thing we're going to do is determine the mark for mathematics by substituting e into here or e into this one and rearrange it all and solving. I could put it in any of the three and it will still give me a correct answer. Okay, and I'll prove that at the end. But at the moment, I've got an equation where I'll get m if I put e in. So I'm going to use that one. m is equal to 164 minus e, which comes from here. So then M is equal to 164 minus 71, which is going to give me 93. So therefore, mass is 93. Now I can check this by substituting both numbers in here and checking that it gives me 164. Or I could check that I've got the same answer in both by doing some substitution in one of these other ones. So if I'd chosen to substitute into equation 2 here, would have been m minus 22, sorry, 71 is equal to 22. Take this over by adding 71, and I still end up with 93. So, like I said, you can put it into any of the three, and if they're simultaneous, it'll give you the same solution. Now, once you've finished that one, I would definitely suggest going and having a try at question one. So pause the video, have a go at question one. 
Okay, welcome back. So, worked example 10. To finish a project, uh, we're going to buy a total of 25 nuts and bolts. So, highlight that, 25 nuts and bolts from a hardware store. If each nut costs 12 cents and each bolt costs 25 cents, the total purchase price is $4.30. How many nuts and bolts does do they buy? Okay, so all I need to do for this one is I'm going to start setting out my information. So they buy a total of 25 nuts and bolts. So the first equation is going to represent the number of each purchased. So I'm going to buy, let's say, X number of nuts plus, well here I'll change it, N number of nuts plus B number of bolts, and that gives me 25 different items. If each nut costs 12 cents and each bolt costs 25 cents, so now this is a cost function. So each nut costs 12 cents plus each bolt costs 25 cents. That gives me a total of $4.30. Okay, so I've got a number function, I've got a cost function, they have a simultaneous solution. So what we'd really be graphing here is our costs versus our number of items. So all we have to do is the same thing we always do. We're going to rearrange the first equation. So then n is going to be equal to 25 minus b, okay, which makes sense. Because if there's 25 items and you take away the number of bolts, you'll be left with the number of nuts. Now I'm going to substitute this one back into that one. So 0 0.1225 minus b plus 0 0.25 B equals $4.30. Now I might just write next to it what I've done. So we rearranged equation one, and then we sub in equation two. And over here, I'll just name them one and two. Okay, so all I have to do now is expand. Shouldn't be an extra bracket there. Okay, so B. When I expand this, I'll have 0 0.12 times 25, which is going to give me 3 minus 0 0.12B plus 0 0.25B equals 4.30. Three zero. Next, I'm going to group my like terms, which is these two, and I'm going to move that three to the other side. Remember, like I said, if you are making mistakes, it's with that. Okay, so when I group these together, I'll end up with 0.13b is equal to 1.30. Then I'll take this across by division. So then I'll be left with B equals 10. Okay, and now to find the number of nuts, I just substitute it back into this function. So N equals 25 minus 10. So n equals 15. So therefore, we purchase 15 nuts and 10 bolts. And that's it. Once you learn to deconstruct the questions, it's really not that hard of a skill. The problem is that you need to do a lot of practice of these to understand how it's easy to deconstruct the questions into a set of simultaneous equations.